I want to show what your tweets were after the first interview, mm -hmm. right? You wrote this. Was, you quoted Piers, was a boy until 18, and you wrote Piers Morgan Live, get it the fuck together, uh -huh. redefining realness. Your second one said, I was not, quote, formerly a man. Please stop sensationalizing my life and misgendering trans women. People would say, or uh, people said, rather, Piers yeah. said, um, why didn't you tell me that then? Mm -hmm. What was your response? Oh, what, well, what my, is your I response? feel like my own personal um, failure to me, and also I think to my community as well, was that I, I didn't express my anger in the moment that I felt it. And I you did feel up. angry in the first interview. Oh, you can see, I'm, I'm clenching my jaw. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm very uncomfortable. I can see myself because I know myself, but most people say, oh, she seems so composed right. and happy and polite. And I kept on saying that, you know, being kind and being offensive are not mutually exclusive things. Like, he was very kind to me during that interview. It was a very pleasant exchange, but I don't think people could read the, the anger and the fear that I was feeling. And it's also like knowing that media is a transaction. Yeah. I'm on, I was on his show to promote my book and he was on his show to gain ratings. Mm. And the biggest way that he can gain ratings to people is not to say that this is a trans woman's advocate, this is by saying that this woman that you're seeing, this pretty attractive black woman, you know, let's be real, um, <laughs> is, is a boy, was a boy until 18. And that's how you're gonna get people to wanna listen and watch and all of these things. So um, for me, I think my, my own personal disappointment was that I didn't express my anger on set. But, I but, but don't be too, can I just tell you this? I don't want you to be too hard on yourself because the flip yeah. of that is that you are a black woman on TV on an international space with a white male Host, there are there are power dynamics attached to that. Um, there's, I mean, it's it's not as easy as it looks. People always say, well, because like, whenever I'm on TV, people say, well, after, I would have done this. You should have said this. And it's like there are a lot of factors at play, and I just don't want you to be too hard yeah. on yourself. And for also that. that, also I think just knowing in a, in a bigger space beyond me and peers is that there are there is very rare for trans women, specifically trans women of color, to find safe spaces. And even in that space, which was highly produced, a yeah. space that supposedly my publicist helped craft, right? It still was unsafe. Mm -hmm. You know, they were happy with the interview. The publisher was happy with the interview. I left off steaming piss, and I said, he really just called me a man to my face. Wow. And then when they edited that whole segment, they made it, you see me clench my jaw, and then they cut to us laughing to go to commercial break. Uh. And this is a pre-recorded interview, which I want everyone to realize. This wasn't live. This was also all in their hands. They had the footage to then edit it how they wanted to, and they did. You know, and, and maybe I should have been able to say something, but at the same time, it's like there are a lot of power dynamics at play. And so you go back, and Piers responds like this. And, and this, go ahead. I want to learn why it is so offensive to actually just say that you grew up as a boy, and you then, because you've always felt that you were female, you had surgery to become a woman, to become a real woman, as you say in the book. Why is it offensive? I think that we need to have a discussion about what gender is and gender expectations in our culture. I think that we are born and we're assigned a sex at birth. That is a matter none of us have control over, but we do have control over our destinies and over our, our identities, and we should be respected. It's not about the past. It's not about what surgeries I may or may not have had. It's not about how I disclose my gender to people. It's about who I am right now. I'm Janet Mock. I'm author of Redefining Realness, and I'm a fierce trans advocate. Whew. You definitely handled your business that time. You educated also an entire country on these issues. How important is it for you uh, at this moment to see yourself as a leader of, not the leader, but a leader, in, in, in a movement of an LGBT movement, as someone who's a voice out there, as someone who's educating a public that, as you said, just doesn't get it? I think the number one thing is to realize I'm human, <laughs> right? Yeah. I think for me, I, a lot of my work deals with being very patient mm -hmm. with people who are meeting a trans woman, oftentimes, for the first time, or interacting. And so therefore, a lot of my life is deal, dealt with being patient with people and educating them. And I always think about this bridge called My Back, right? A woman of color text that came out during a time when women of color were not understood. And so I think about it at that same thing. Sometimes I'm often the bridge for a lot of people. And sometimes I don't want to do that work. And I think on that instance, I, in that media <laughs> interview, I did not feel like doing the work and I did not feel like doing it super kindly. Yeah. And I wanted to express the anger that my community feels every single day. Hmm. Pierce talks about being vilified. And I think about, you have a show, you have two million followers and you're saying that I'm, my community's bullying you. <laughs> 
you know, it, it just, the power dynamics were just so, uh, and I think that it's a lack of people understanding their privilege. And I think that's a lot of the work that needs to be done that I that I feel like that I am a part of helping do is unpacking that for a lot of people. And sometimes they see trans issues and it's like, I'm also a trans black woman right. who's young, who grew up poor, who engaged in sex work as a teenager to pay for the medical care that she needed. There's a lot of layers there. And right. I can't never just communicate on just gender alone. Right. You know, and I bring back, you know, Kimberly Crenshaw, like, it's about intersectionality. It's about the multiplicities of our identities. Yeah. And so it's hard for me sometimes when I go into a mainstream space where they're just only wanting me to deal with trans issues. Right. And I can never just deal with trans issues because that's not all of my that's existence. That's not all you are.